is part 7 of ASP.NET Web Services tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss calling a live weather forecast web service from an ASP.NET Web application. Here is the URL of that live weather web service. At the moment, this web service can only be used with US zip codes. Let's visit this weather web service. So notice that we have the same URL as we have seen on the slide. I'll have this URL available on my blog in case you need it. If you recollect from the previous sessions in this video series, when we click on this service description link, we'll be taken to the Vistal page, that is the web service description language page. This Vistal page will be used by Visual Studio to auto-generate proxy classes for us. And the client application can then use those auto-generated proxy classes to invoke the web methods of the web service. This weather web service has made three web methods available. We'll be using this web method, get city weather by zip. The name of the method speaks for itself. We provided a zip code. This method is going to return the weather at that zip code. So let's quickly test this. Let's pass in a valid zip code. Let's pass 22041 and click invoke. Look at that. We get a response back from the web service. First of all, notice that the response is in SOAP formatted message. And look at the first element here, you know, an XML element success, which says true. Response text, it says city is found. State is Virginia. City is Falls Church. The temperature is around 51. You know, it's cloudy in Virginia at the moment. Now, we passed a valid zip code and we get a response back. Let's see what's going to happen if we pass an invalid zip code, something like ABC, and click invoke. Look at that. The success element now says false and the response text is invalid zip. Now, this web service is useful in case if you have a website and you want to display US specific city website uh, weather on your website. So let's see how to consume this weather web service in an ASP.NET web application. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here I have an empty ASP.NET web application. The first step here is to add a reference to the weather web service. And to do that, right click on the references folder and select add service reference. And within this address text box, we need to type the URL of the weather web service. So let's copy it from the notepad. Paste it there and then click the go button. So it should now discover that weather web service. Look at that, we have the weather web service. Then if we expand this and select weather soap, look at this, it displays all the three web methods that are available with this weather web service. Give it a meaningful namespace. Let's call it weather service and click OK. Clicking on OK should auto-generate proxy classes for us. And if you want to have a look at those proxy classes, you know, click on this button within the Solution Explorer, which says Show All Files, and expand Weather Service, expand References.svc map, and then you should see references uh, Reference.cs file. So this is the class file, which has got the auto-generated proxy classes. So there's a quite a bit of code that's auto-generated for us. Now, we want to design a web form that looks like this, where the end user can enter a zip code. And then once they click this button, Get Weather, we want to invoke that weather web service and then display the weather information within the label controls, as you can see here. So the first step is to add that web form itself. So let's right click on the project name, Add a new item. And we want to add web form 1. So let's click Add. To speed things up, I have already implemented the HTML to get this user interface. So let's copy that from the notepad and paste it within our web form. Now this is a very straightforward HTML. I have a table tag within that. I have got some TRs and TDs and then this text, you know, zip code city. Let's actually flip this to the design mode so that you can actually see the design of it. Look at that. We have this text and then these label controls to display the weather information. And then once a button control here, and then a label control with red font, just in case if the weather web service has failed, we want to display the error information within this label control. All right, so now let's click on this button to generate the click event handler. So now we already have the proxy classes generated. 
So first is if you recollect the namespace that we have given, it is weather service. Within that, we have got several classes. But then the one that we are interested in is the weather soap client class. So that's the client to invoke the weather web service. So let's call it client equals new weather service dot weather soap client. And then this client object should have those three methods that we have seen on the web service. So we should see all these methods, but we are interested in get city weather by zip method. So let's invoke that method. And look at this. It expects a zip code to be passed in. So where are we going to get the zip code from? From this specific text box. And what is the ID of the text box? It is txt zip. Okay. So let's retrieve the text property. So it's txt zip dot text. All right. Now, if you look at the return type of this method, look at what it is returning from the IntelliSense. It's actually returning a weather return object. Okay. So let's create a variable of type weather return, and that class should be in this namespace weather service. So weather return. And let's call this result. OK. So now, if you inspect this result object, it should have the properties that are shown in the response that we get back. For example, let's click on this one. Let's pass 22041. Click Invoke. Look at that. We should have a success uh, property, response text property, state, city, weather, station. You know, there are several properties but we are going to use only these you know a few of them but if you want to display different information you know depending on what you want to display you can choose those properties okay so now when i say result dot look at that i have response text i have success i have state you know all the properties that we have seen on this response all right now we want to display them in the label controls so we have label city. So label city dot text equals result dot city. Similarly, label state dot text equals result dot state. LBL temperature dot text equals result dot temperature. LBL weather station city dot text equals result dot weather station city and LBL wind dot text equals result dot wind. I think those are all. Yep. All right. So now look at this. If it is successfully returned, then the success element will be true. Otherwise, what's going to happen if we pass in something like test and click invoke? Look at that. Um, success returns false. So here, you know, the web service didn't find the zip code that we have provided. And look at the response text. It says invalid zip. So basically, we can use these two elements to, you know, display the appropriate information on our web form. So if the result object success element, look at that, that's a Boolean property, meaning it's either going to return true or false. If that property has returned true, then display weather information in the label controls. Else, if it has returned false, then it comes to the else block, in which case in the error label, we want to display the value that is present in the response text property of that result object. Okay, so if we provide an invalid zip code, what is response text going to be? Invalid zip, and that's what will be displayed in the label uh, label error. Okay, and when we display an error message, we want to empty out these labels as well. So let's go ahead and set them to an empty string. So string dot empty. We want to do that for all the label controls, so let's quickly copy and paste them 
for all the label controls. Alright, and then if we have found um, the city that we are looking for, we want to set um, error label text to an empty string. Otherwise, that error will be still showing up. Alright, with these changes, let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work. Actually, we might run into an exception. We'll fix that in just a bit. So 22041, let's pass in a valid zip code and click this button, get weather. Look at that, we get an error. And it says an endpoint configuration section for contract weather service dot weather soap could not be loaded because more than one endpoint configuration for that contract was found. So basically this error message say, states that it has found more than one endpoint configuration. So what this means is when we have generated the um, proxy classes within web.config file, it has generated some configuration information for us. And if you look at this client here, notice that we have got two endpoints. So now it's confused on which endpoint to use. So we have to specify the name of the endpoint. So here we have got two of them. The first one name is weather soap and this one is weather soap one two. So specify the name of one of the endpoints. So let's go back to our web form. And then when we have created this client object here, you know, this constructor, there are several overloaded uh, constructors here. I'm going to use the one where we can pass the endpoint configuration name. And what is the name? Weather. So we want to use that endpoint. So with this change, let's run it once more. And then enter a valid zip code, click the button. So we should get a response back. Look at that. We are displaying you know, the information that we wanted. Let's pass in another zip code, 22314, which is Alexandria, again in Virginia. And let's pass maybe something like XYZ. Click Get Weather. Look at that. It says Invalid Zip. So this is working as expected. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.